Have you ever wondered what are the activities and habits that a good developer has? Well, in today's video, this is exactly what we are going to talk about. What is up people and welcome to Developer Habits, a YouTube channel for software engineers interested in growth mindset, developer lifestyle and technical tutorials. My name is Ketmar, I'm a full stack engineer from Estonia and today we are going to talk about the habits that I believe will help you to become a great developer. In one of my previous videos I spoke about Atomic Habits, a book that will help you to get rid of the bad habits and establish good ones. But the question is, what are the habits that a developer should establish? Well, this is what we are going to talk about now. This list of habits is based on my own experience as a developer. They have helped me to perform consistently at a solid level and some of them are technical, some of them less technical, but in the end these are the points that I believe will help you to become a better developer. Constant learning. IT moves really fast because both software and hardware solutions are constantly being optimized and made faster. This is why I believe we as software developers should also try to make things better. For example, if there are tools coming out that help you to solve your problem in a better way, then you should be knowledgeable about it. I'm not saying that you should try to read, I don't know, one or two hours of articles every day, but at least subscribe to some specific weekly newsletters that will give you, give you the main news on the content. Learning fundamentals. It's something important in every area of life, but especially in IT where things move really fast. And how I see it is that once I have learned the fundamentals of whatever technology or aspect of programming, then it's easier for me to build new knowledge on top of that. Let me bring you an example. When I had to learn JavaScript, I made sure that I won't jump into different frameworks or libraries before I have played around with vanilla JavaScript long enough. After having mastered uh, different terminologies like callbacks or promises and so on, it was so much easier for me to jump into Node.js or React.js or Vue.js and so on. So make sure to learn the fundamentals because that way learning new things becomes easier. Thinking about the problem and the solution. This is something that has helped me tremendously in my professional career because when product managers, for example, come to me and ask for a solution, it's not my first thing to think about the technical solution. I try to go through the problem, ask for more questions to get more information and then start thinking about how to solve the problem and do we even actually need to code. A specific example is from one of the hackathons where I participated. One of the teammates of mine told me that they need to edit content and they need a content management system. But once I understood that the frequency when they make, uh, of how often they make changes to the page is like once or twice a day, then it turned out that it would be easier and time-wise more efficient to just let them do those changes in the code. So remember, not always are the solutions technical. Think about the problem and then come up with a solution. Chunking my big tasks into smaller ones. It's one of those habits that I found really difficult to do when I was less experienced, but now try to do every day. Because by chunking or making my tasks smaller, I firstly get a better overview of what I have to do and eventually those hard tasks become easier. Secondly, it's easier to delegate those smaller parts to my teammates when there's a need. And thirdly, I have a greater sense of accomplishment because once I finish one small part, I can already feel that I've done something. So remember, chunk your tasks into smaller ones. Naming variables. Usually, we do not write the code for our machines, but also for ourselves and our teammates. We have to make sure that the code that we write is easy to understand and efficient. One of the easiest ways to achieve that is by 
putting some conscious efforts into naming our variables. For example, if there's an array of animals, then instead of naming that array X, Y, or Z, just name it animals. Or if you want to store a brown horse from that array into a separate variable, don't name the variable X, Y, or Z, but just name it brown horse. It's easy and simple and your teammates and you yourself will thank you in the future. Testing, 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 testing. I actually have a separate video about uh, testing and, in, and the importance of it. But basically what I'm trying to say is that whenever you write some codes or you put something to live, then make sure to test what you have graded either by writing unit tests, functional tests, or by doing manual testing. It's your responsibility to make sure that what you put out there functions properly. Because if you won't, your customers or your visitors do. Taking breaks. I know I hate it when someone tells me to take a break when I'm coding, but I also know that it's really beneficial to you. Firstly, you can't just sit around the computer all day long. You have to move around. Secondly, you are, your eyes need rest. And thirdly, you've probably been in a situation where you're stuck with a problem and you know, go move around, come back and you have the solution. Well, basically what happens is that you put your focus to some, into something other, but your brain still subconsciously continues working on that problem. And when you come back, Ta-da! You have the solution. So, yeah, take breaks. So, these are my seven habits that I believe have helped me to become a better developer. If you like this video, then please do hit this subscribe button below. With that said, I thank you for listening and see you in the next video. Bye!